Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Industrial Channel. I am John with the Technical Support Team. In this video, we are covering a common topic we assist with in our department pertaining to our grease guns, failure to dispense. This can show in many forms, but here are just a few of the frequent examples. Grease gun cycles, but does not dispense grease. Unit dispenses grease while not attached to a fitting, but fails to build pressure or dispense when attached to a fitting. Grease gun cycles very slowly, stalls, or expels lubricant out the relief port without the coupler attached to a grease fitting. Before we dive into the cause, let's show you a short demonstration of a gun facing one of these situations, so you can see a before and after comparison of our recommended cleaning procedure. The 1162 on the stand was sent to us for failure evaluation. For a comparison, here is an 1162, and what it should sound like while cycling normally, dispensing lubricant out the open port. Let's now attach this gun to a pressure gauge and watch it build pressure and stall. As we can see here, this gun is functioning normally. Let's now attach air supply to the gun on the stand and see what happens. As you can see, the unit is cycling very slowly with no lubricant discharge. Interestingly, this test has also been performed without the coupler attached to the whip hose to give it a chance at maximum flow. Next test of this gun is with the hose removed. There's our hose. Let's go ahead and attach air to it and see what happens. As you can see, the gun is now cycling freely, indicating this gun is still serviceable. However, the test determines that the whip hose has become blocked and needs replacing. This is a common scenario we assist with when troubleshooting a grease gun and can occur in any gun, whether it is a pneumatic, electronic, or of the manual variety. This common issue stems from contamination. Debris is the number one cause of failure and can be anything from dried up lubricant, dirt and rocks, as well as wooden plastic chips blocking the inlet to the hose or checks and passages in between. For these reasons and others where the performance of the gun has reduced, we would recommend performing a clean out procedure. If you use your gun frequently, this process should be performed once every couple months or when pressure and dispensing performance begins to diminish. This is a simple process that should take a few minutes to perform and get you back in service. Some items to have on hand are first and foremost safety equipment such as eye protection and gloves, wrenches, cleaning brushes, I found spray gun brushes worked really well when cleaning the gun head passages, a magnet to remove the check ball, dowel and hammer for receding the check ball, and plenty of shop towels or rags. The only fluids we will recommend for this process are mineral spirits for manually cleaning the passages and oil-based penetrants and light oils such as transmission fluids for cycling through the gun. Do not use carburetor cleaners, brake cleaners, fuels, or gasoline. These fluids could damage the grease gun as well as cause personal injury. Also, since we're talking disclaimers, should your hose become blocked with debris like this one here, do not attempt to clear it with compressed air or use a method called back or reverse flushing. You may burst the hose and cause personal injury or injure those around you. Safest thing to do is replace the hose and return to service. And with those out of the way, let's get started. Let's begin by removing the grease tube assembly from the gun head. Also remove the follow rod and spring assembly from the tube. Both will need to be wiped down before reassembly. Flip the gun head upside down and remove as much remaining lubricant from the head as you can to expose the plunger and inlet port. Also remove the lubricant from the front face of the follower assembly. Doing this will reduce the chances of further contamination. This first cleaning step is critical as shown by the quick dissection of the lubricant removed, uncovered evidence of large pieces of an unknown material having entered the lubricant, potentially causing problems such as blocking up the whip hose down the road. Next, fill the head inlet cavity with one of the fluids recommended earlier for cycling through the unit. Automatic transmission fluid is our choice for this demonstration. With the unit filled so the inlet passage is covered, cycle the gun and dispense the fluid out the open end. This step can be performed on its own as a quick field flush to break up most debris or dry lubricant that is blocking the passages and force it out of the unit. In some cases, this is all you will need. However, as we can see with this gun, it was not dispensing the fluid out as originally hoped to demonstrate. After about a minute or so of toggling cycle rate and air pressure, the fluid finally drained. Inspecting the dispensed fluid shows we pushed out what appears to be small pebbles and bits of rubber or plastic. Possible reasons the fluid did not originally pass through. 
And as seen here with the second flush attempt, the fluid passed right through indicating the ball check is now held open, so a heavier cleaning is needed to remove larger debris. To access the check ball and seat area, remove the cover plug along with the spring and finally the check ball. Close up of the ball before wipe down another pebble. And looking down the check seat area confirms debris was still lodged in the housing, potentially holding the ball in an open state. Using mineral spirits and a combination of brushes, thoroughly scrub all passages in the head to knock any remaining particles loose so they can be removed. This unit had no shortage of small rocks and material to remove, but eventually the ports and passages were cleared for the next step. After the cleaning, we can now examine the check seat more thoroughly. Nicks and depressions are visible where the ball pressed solid material into the seating surface. These markings may not allow the ball to seat properly, potentially causing pressure and dispensing volume loss, so the check ball must be reseated. To reseat the ball, whether it is the original or if necessary a replacement, use a small dowel rod or brass punch, and with the ball pressed firmly into the check seat surface, give the dowel a light to medium tap with a hammer. After the check ball is reseated, insert the spring, then thread down and tighten the plug. This completes the cleaning process. With everything wiped down completely and cleared of any debris and old grease, it is now time to finish reassembling the tube assembly. Reinstall the original hose if found to be clear, or thread on a new hose if needed. Lastly, do not reinsert the used cartridge of grease if this cleaning was performed in the middle of dispensing a cartridge. Always start fresh with a new unopened cartridge after cleaning in case the used cartridge is contaminated. Okay, cleaning is done and hose as well as a new coupler installed. Gun has also been primed. If you require the steps to prime a grease gun, please see the link above or in the description to see the video showing this process. A couple suggestions during priming, after this cleaning to prime the gun, is to cycle at a low rate to allow time for the grease to enter the plunger chamber. Also to give maximum flow, prime the gun itself without the hose attached. Rarely is the case, but the hose attached could cause it to become airbound, so cycling the gun with an open end may be required to get the flow going. Once you see the grease dispensing out the open end, hose can be reattached and priming process completed. Let's now pull the trigger and see what happens. As we can see, unit is now cycling and dispensing out the coupler end. Let's attach the gun to the pressure gauge and see if it builds pressure. At 100 PSI for this 1162, we should see roughly 4,000 PSI. It has reached pressure installed as it should, so with a quick and simple cleaning, along with a replacement hose, this gun is ready to return to the field. I hope the evaluation of this failed unit helped you with the maintenance on your grease gun. If it did, please give us a thumbs up so we know we are able to get you back up and running. For any further assistance, feel free to contact our technical support team at the information on the screen. Also, feel free to subscribe to our channel for more useful tutorial and informational videos. This is John with the technical support team. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next repair.